ferocious Mike Tyson. That's all it took. One shot. He may not get up. It's over. It's over. Mike Tyson returns to the ring. Not on pay-per-view. Only on Showtime. Mike Tyson versus Julius Francis. In the fine movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, the boss of the real estate company, humiliates an employee by telling him, my watch costs more than your car. Mike Tyson weighed in Friday wearing a watch and bracelet set he picked up in London for a million dollars. The items cost twice as much as Julius Francis will make on Saturday. Now, even as Tyson's skills have diminished, the fight is supposed to be a similar mismatch. Francis is a former kickboxer, so if Tyson tries any funny business, Francis might kick him, and that would hurt. Here's Jeremy Schaap. Mike Tyson! The world now knows that Mike Tyson weighs nearly 14 stone, or 223 pounds. But as it always is before a fight between heavyweights, who can weigh anything, the weigh-in Friday afternoon was mere formality, which is what most observers think this fight will be. Perhaps not since the Battle of Britain has a foreigner been so heavily favored to triumph in England. Julius Francis's handlers remember who won that fight and insist their man will show up, at least long enough to collect his $700,000 paycheck. We're um, the lamb to the sacrifice here. But, you know, if he fancies the fight and Tyson's made a mistake, Julius, Julius can win. But, you know, if you go by record books, this should be a free round job at the most for Mike Tyson. A lot of people are characterizing this fight as a mismatch. You're the one who promoted it, who created it. Is it a mismatch? It's an event. <laughs> and what's the, the difference between an event and a mismatch? Well, an event is that the public will, will, you know, are clamoring for tickets. The press are all here wanting to see it because it's, it's, it's got a life of its own, this, uh, this promotion. Mike understands the sport uh, better than anybody. He understands that anything could happen during a fight. Uh, that's why we prepared to go 10 rounds. If it was just going to be a two or three round fight, that's all we would have prepared for. You know, i got to be honest about it. I agree with his manager. Uh, I don't think the fight will go past three rounds. In, in, in anywhere between one to three, the fight gonna be over with. Why? Because Mike is too fast, he punched too hard, the skills are good. The jokes about English heavyweights and their remarkable ability to find a horizontal plane are now dated, thanks to Lennox Lewis. But Julius Francis still has a lot to live down to. Remember Frank Bruno? How about Henry Cooper? Ten years ago this week, however, the last time Tyson fought outside the U.S., the odds against Buster Douglas were much greater. In Manchester, England, Jeremy Schaap, ESPN. We're at the Amiens Arena here in Manchester, England, where tonight on Showtime, Mike Tyson will make his European debut against British heavyweight champ Julius Francis. Ringside for that 10 o'clock broadcast, the fight doctor, Freddy Pacheco. Hi, Will. And Steve Alper. Gentlemen, big excitement about this fight. You've there, been to some pretty big fights. Why is this one cranking up the way it is in England? Well, I, I believe because there's never been something this big since Sally was here, and therefore just the nature of an American heavyweight of the passionate nature and with the dramatic story of Tyson. It's not so much the fight. It's Tyson. What's he going to do? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the British press are saying Tyson is yesterday's man. Why is he doing so well here if he's yesterday's man, Steve? Why is he doing so well here? I think they, they thrive on celebrity doom here good or bad. He's a novelty over here. They want to see if he's going to knock the guy out with a resounding punch or create a train wreck. I think that has a lot to do with uh, all the stuff that's going on here. I mean, the drama that always surrounds Mike Tyson. Let's talk a little bit about what you think the fight is going to be, you know? The bell rings. What are we going to see? Well, let me put it to you. Are we going to be way. hearing this? Uh, probably, because I think most of the fans are going to be behind uh, Tyson, especially after the first minute when it's over. That's just my humble opinion, but let me let me try to sum it up this way. Yeah, Bill. sure, Steve. I think, I think, first of all, the guy, Julius Francis, has sold advertising space on the bottoms of his shoes. I, he's I under, this. he's, this is like an Abbott and Costello movie. It's unbelievable. Yeah. He's under hypnosis. He's wearing sunglasses and headphones, probably all the way up to the referee's instructions right. to block everything out, and his own manager, Frank Maloney has said if the guy gets out of the first round, it'll be a moral victory. This is not an overflow of confidence, Bill. <laughs> P.S. I have never seen anybody so sure of defeat as the English challenger. I've seen people going knocked out against Joe Lewis, against Muhammad. I've never seen a guy so thoroughly convinced he's going to lose. All right, well, let's look in the future then. Where does Tyson go from here? Assuming 
that this well, is a massive, easy victory for Mike Tyson. That's very interesting because that's what we're doing here tonight. We're mm -hmm. doing here tonight if Tyson doesn't get him in the first or second, uh-oh. If he goes into the third or fourth, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh for his, for his power. So we're looking at his future for Tyson. Hey, this is his future. If he comes in and blasts the guy out, he's on. Ferdy, Steve, I thank you. You'll be ringside. That broadcast is 10 o'clock tonight. Julius Francis against Mike Tyson on Showtime. Coming up next, a special presentation on Showtime. Mike Tyson in his own words. This is an interesting show. I think you're going to want to see Mike Tyson candidly talking about his feelings in the year 2000. He faces Julius Francis tonight. Watch this now. This has been a Showtime Championship Boxing Report update with Bill Boggs. The new heavyweight champion of the world. My theory is to destroy me, destroy me. It is hard to imagine an athlete who has generated more excitement or ignited more controversy than Michael Gerard Tyson. Since his release from an Indiana State Penitentiary five years ago, he has been on a bizarre roller coaster ride. It has included two world titles, multiple altercations, an ear biting incident, and another prison term. Through all this, the normally reticent Mike Tyson has conducted over a dozen interviews with Showtime Championship Boxing. While these conversations have run an emotional gamut from rage to resignation, he has often surprised us with his insights and impressed us with his candor. Here with the aid of a timeline and starting on a dark morning in the state of Indiana is Mike Tyson in his own words. Today, Mike Tyson is a free man after serving three years. I never dreamed of the ordeal that would come across my life that came across during three years in prison. And during that time, a great deal of what I thought at one time has changed. I just know people for what they really are. It's scary. I don't know why I want to be treated just basically. It's just a nature of me. You know what I mean? Maybe it's ego. Maybe it's just loneliness. You just want to compete. I just, that's just the way I just want to do well. This is what I do. This is what the only thing I'm interested in doing. I just knew this guy wasn't able to take anything. I had to just shot. I just knew he wasn't able to. It's always, I'm my worst critic, but I was just happy to be in the ring. I didn't care about how my performance was. I was just, I knew after I got out of that first fight, it was just smooth sailing. I'm very into Mike Tyson. I'm very into me as an individual. I'm just looking in the mirror. You're just into me. It's, you want to know what makes yourself tick. Now, how did this person come to evolve? <laughs> I win this title after 10 years of winning it the first time. It's going to be wild. I went through all that crap from the beginning of trouble with the courts and the clubs and I mean, being put in the hole and being harassed in prison and all that stuff. And I come out here and I'm going to beat this guy and win this title. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is something. To this day, I sometimes I say, how the hell do I get here? You know, because I look at myself. I'm not the biggest guy in the world. I'm not the strongest guy in the world. And I say to myself, what am I doing here? And I've been doing this since I've been 12 years old, fighting competitively, and I say, what am I doing here? Michael, have you ever fought a fighter with a jab like Bruce Seldon's? How long have you been a reporter? And Tyson with a left hook, and Seldon is down on his champion forever. You know, like cars and <laughs> houses and shoes and stuff and rings and watches. You collect them, you have fun with them. You um, reek what they bring you. And um, you're enjoying for a moment of time and then eventually you, you give them up. Mr. Holyfield said bad things. A couple, a couple of those fights said bad things about me while I was in prison. The word they said was this, as if they took a gun and put it to my head and pulled the trigger.
But I really thought I was just going over there and just obliviate him quickly. I didn't have no game plan. I don't remember what I was doing, but I know he was hitting me with some good shots. I don't even remember feeling the shots, but I know I got to hear him though. We were finally hitting boop, 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 boop. I was throwing my punches halfway. And um, he would beat me to the punch, but I should have the punch. And then come forward, I mean, the punch would just be here. And he would count him, he would sit through. Had real fast counter punches, I mean, first class counter punches. So, I just want to shake your hand, man. It's been so long. I, I mean, I just want to touch you. I don't get emotionally affected by it. I lost and my life is miserable and days. It's over and I don't sweat about it and then we just take care of it next time. He hit him again. He bit him again. Mike Tyson has bit. He battled Holyfield for the second time and he bit his own out four. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting buddy like that. I got children to raise. And this guy keeps butting me, trying to cut me and get me stopped on cut. I got to retaliate. Was that a retaliation for the eye when you bit him in his ear? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I got to go home and my kids are going to be scared of me. Look at me, man. I only ask that it's not a penalty for life. We must take the most stringent action available to us. $3 million and revocation of license. So, totally useless. I could have done other things, you know, I, I could have, I had played more, but my spirit was just gone to do anything else. But I couldn't do what I truly loved to do. How did you spend, uh, how did you spend your time? What did you do? I stayed in Brooklyn most of the time. Went to my old neighborhood on Flatbush Avenue in Brownsville. I stayed there, but mostly the whole summer. I stayed there in, um, in retrospect, and I used to look back and see where I came from. So people get shot, see people fighting, see people quarreling over dice games. My dumb ass got in the dice game. I even got some arguments. And you know, man, I used to put myself back in um, perspective. I make a motion that we grant Mr. Tyson's petition for reinstatement that he be allowed to box again in the state of Nevada. Y'all guys know what I do. Y'all know what I do. I put people in body bags. to like hitting a home run. Like if you ever talk to a guy like Mickey Mantle or Joe DiMaggio or Hank Aaron, they tell you when you hit a good home run, you don't even feel it. Pow. You just don't feel it. You don't even feel like the bat hits the ball and it's perfect leverage. And that's how the punch felt like I missed. Sentenced one year for a road rage incident, today Mike Tyson was brought to a Montgomery County jail. You don't go to jail for what you do, you go to jail for what you're capable of doing. They sketched out, this is Mike Tyson, this is who he is. It's pervasive that he's a savage or a madman. I'm, I'm glad it's over now, but it was just, I was really low, a really low moment. I don't have no grudges, life is too short to have grudges. It's just too short. in every fight. It happens all the time. I hit the guy. It wasn't really a hard punch, but it was a good snappy punch. He went down, he got up, he walked to the corner. He didn't want to continue. He wanted to um, get a free meal, which he did. I got a million dollar car today, right? I'm out here, I do what I want to do. I live in mansions. I, I used to do what, basically what I want to do. But while I'm doing all this, I never forget there's people in prison suffering. I just um, take it one day at a time. I never look for the future or anything. I don't ever anticipating being an old man with grandkids and son, I know that I'm not gonna have a good ending in this society, and I'm, just, and I'm willing to accept that, but I, I mean, I'm no um, crybaby, and I know most of the things that I've been doing in my life, I have to carry the weight of a fool, even though other people contribute to it, I have to carry the weight alone, and um, I'm willing to do that. How will the strange saga of Mike Tyson end? No one knows, but coming up in Manchester, England, Tyson will be stepping into the ring against the British heavyweight champion, Julius Francis. I've seen him fight, um, I don't know, he's a good fighter. He's a British champion, he can't be above and be British champion. I saw him fight, he's a tough guy, and I don't think he's gonna beat me at all. 
Is in there to do real well. You can see this heavyweight contest, Tyson versus Francis, next, only on Showtime. I'm Steve Albert, and thanks for watching Mike Tyson in his own words. Mike Tyson. That's all it took. One shot. He may not get up. It's over. It's over. Mike Tyson returns to the ring. Not on pay-per-view. Only on Showtime. Mike Tyson versus Julius Francis. Next on Showtime. This is a Showtime Championship Boxing Report update with Bill Boggs. Well, you've just seen Mike Tyson in his own words. We're here at the MEN Arena in Manchester, England, where tonight, in just a little while, right here on Showtime, Mike Tyson will make his European debut against the British heavyweight champ, Julius Francis. With some final thoughts on both the fight and the huge event that it's become over here, our British correspondent, the Suns, Colin Hart. First, the fight. What do you think? Bill, we've waited six weeks to see Mike Tyson in action, and I can't believe it's the moment is almost upon us. And my final thoughts on the fight, for those who are watching in the United States or Britain, when that opening bell sounds, please do not blink, because it could be over that quickly. Or don't go to the refrigerator. But what about the event itself? I mean, Tyson's been on the front page of all these papers. 22,000 people bought tickets to see the man. Why? Well, it's been going on for three weeks now. And why? Because of his notoriety, and also it's the first time he's ever fought in Britain. And when they, he comes out the locker room and walks towards the ring, that crowd's going to go crazy. Colin, I thank you. For, it's great working with you all week. The fight is indeed next, the moment of truth for Mike Tyson. And Julius Francis is right here on Showtime, so sit back, relax, dig in, and enjoy it. This has been a Showtime Championship Boxing Report update with Bill Boggs.